Welcome to session 20 of Complexity Explorer's MESA tutorial. This, in this session, we're going to look at batch runners so that way you can do parameter sweeps over a model and see how those parameters may impact the results. This represents the last coding session for this tutorial and represents the near completion of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. But to get started, once again, either open up your IDE or Google Colab instance. Uh, as usual, you want to make sure that your sugarmap.txt file is loaded uh, either by mounting your Google Drive uh, or by loading, loading it manually in the folder section. And then we have our helper functions, uh, which have become four now, uh, based off data collector uh, and the need to calculate our distance. We have our resource classes, which consist of sugar and spice. Then we have our trader agent agent, which is our longest class, and involves their functions to maneuver through the landscape and trade. Then we have our model class, uh, where we built out batch runner for the last time. What we want to do, though, is we want to uh, actually comment out our agent reporters. Uh, we're doing this because Google Colab only gives you so much RAM, and after running uh, this model multiple times, uh, you will actually run out of RAM uh, if you're collecting your agent reporters. This is not an uncommon problem uh, and can typically be solved if you're running on your local machine uh, to saving to disk as you collect your data. Uh, next we have Sugarscape, uh, then we, or we call our model, and then we analyze our model. All right, but now we're going to do batch run. So we're going to create a new section for batch run. So we can add a text field, uh, and we'll call it batch run, uh, and the analysis uh, associated with that. And then we'll add a code field. We can uh, collapse this back down, our data or analyze the data for our single runs. All right? And now we want to create our batch runs. So the way batch runs work is you pass in a dictionary of parameters for all the parameters you want to run through your model. So you ca capture multiple variations, and you can uh, understand how your model functions under different conditions. But right? although this is somewhat necessary for this one. Uh, for this model, just to demonstrate batch runs capability, you can pass in single parameters, right? So we're going to keep the width and height the same uh, at 50. Because of how we use the keyword arguments, again, this is unnecessary, all right? But uh, this does demonstrate batch runners kind of processes. So width as a keyword 50, height as a keyword 50, which is consistent with our keyword arguments in our Sugarscape uh, G1MT model class. And then we're going to start to create some variants. Uh, with our other parameters. And so vision min, uh, or vision underscore min is one of our parameters, uh, and we're going to use a range, range function and go from 1 to 3. So this will actually run the model with a minimum vision of 1 and a minimum vision of 2, based off how Python's range function works. And the next one we could look at uh, is the uh, metabolism max, right? So how, how much sugar or spice uh, agents burn at any given step. And for this one, we'll lower it, um, and you can pass in other things like a list. I'll keep you these uh, parameter sweeps intentionally small just to demonstrate how to do it uh, and then save some time in the runtime that it takes. All right, so for metabolism max, right, instead of doing, like, say, a, a, a continuous list of 1 through 100, uh, you can actually just put in specific values that we want. So we're going to do 3 or 5. So we're going to put a list that does 3 and 5. So really just any iterator. Uh, you can use in order to pass in parameters. Again, these are being kept intentionally small. I uh, usually do a lot more, but for the interest of time, uh, it's easier to demonstrate with just four variations. Okay, then well, we're going to do, we got to get the results that come out, so we'll call this results underscore batch, and then that will equal mesa.batch underscore run. Okay, so again, mesa.batch underscore run. Uh, and then uh, batch run takes a couple parameters. So the first we got to pass in our model class. So that's sugarscape G1 MT. Right? And then we use a keyword argument parameters, and that's going to equal params, which is the name of the dictionary we just built. And then it has some other keyword arguments. In this case, we do iterations equals one. Right? The number of processes equals one. Pretty sure even if you change this, it doesn't matter. Uh, by all accounts, it seems that uh, Google Colab locks you down to one. Um, uh, one processor, right? Uh, and then data co underscore collection underscore period, right? Uh, so that also defaults to one, right? Uh, but we're going to put that as a keyword argument as one, two, uh, and then whether or not to display uh, progress, 
and this will show a progress bar of how many runs uh, that you've run out of uh, out of your model. Okay, now if you want a pretty good overview or an overview of each of the keyword arguments for batch run, if you go to the Mesa tutorial batch run, uh, it walks you through what each one is uh, and what each one uh, or what its default is. All right, so these are the various parameters that go into batch run uh, that uh, that you can use. Uh, now, one thing we're going to have to add uh, is that because you how you terminate the program, because you might get a model that runs forever. I'm going to see that in just a second. All right, so we run this, right, and we get an error. Right, we get an error because uh, it ha the SugarScape model has no attribute level. All right, so this is just a, a feature that you have to have. Uh, in order to um, uh, tell the model when to stop, because some models could run forever unless it's got some kind of stopping function, right? Uh, and so that that is part of this. We can switch self dot running to false, right? And it'll stop it. So we go into uh, our initialization of the model, and we just add an attribute that says self dot running uh, equals true. Run that. And we can collapse this back down. And then we run the model. Okay. And so now it's started to go. Each one of these, I think, takes about uh, 90 or so seconds. Um, and so we will fast forward through time uh, as you watch this. Okay. So as you can see, got through 75%. Uh, so three of my four, right, based off all the combinations between vision min and the title is a max. Uh, and now my model is completed. So now that my model is completed, now we, we analyze the results. So we're going to add a code cell uh, of the different variations. Uh, and then we're just going to do uh, you know code very similar to what we did before. But just to be thorough, we'll show you what results from batch run look like uh, in, or, uh, so you can understand how to analyze those results. Now in this case, uh, we're going to import pandas as PD, kind of per standard pandas convention, because we want to use our own pandas data frame. All right, so if I had called this um, without uh, without doing it, uh, without importing pandas, I would have got an error. All right, so we'll create a pandas data frame uh, based off results dot batch. Right, because that's actually in the dictionary uh, at this point. Now you can see what that looks like. All right, uh, and that creates our um, uh, our our data frame for all our model. So we get the run ID, the iteration number, right, uh, and and the step for that iteration. And this would be the same if you did an agent reporter, right? Uh, but you do got to convert them from the dictionary form uh, into the uh, uh, into a data frame if you want to use uh, the data frame, right? Now, typically you do more than one iteration, uh, but just for the sake of time, we're only going to do one iteration. Right? And then you can see you have the standard features like trade volume, uh, price, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so now I want to analyze that uh, and see how our results differ over time. So first, let's make sure our kind of foundational result that the uh, price equilibrium uh, really kind of converges towards one uh, is still in place. So to do this, we'll just do our standard scatter plot. Right, and our x-axis will be uh, the number of steps, right, which is 0 through 999. Uh, four different times because we ran four different variations, which you can look at the run ID right above that, zero to three. All right, and those are our four variations that we ran. So results underscore death, right, with the X uh, axis being step, right, and then the Y axis would be average price, or correction would just be price, which is the geometric mean uh, of the uh, of all the trades that occur. Right, so fairly simple. I'm going to add the size um, attribute, otherwise our, our uh, dots are too big. Uh, I'll just make this a 0 0.75. Right, so plt.scatter, we run that. And sure enough, uh, we go from less dense to more and more dense uh, around 1 right, as the price uh, as the prices converge uh, towards 1 per the predicted model. So that's good. We ran a bunch of different vari We ran some different variations. Uh, and, and we're getting the main result uh, that is validated uh, via economic theory. Typically with parameter sweeps like this, we want to explore different variations to see how those impact the model. All right, so we could do, uh, this is again just using kind of pandas 
uh, functions in order to filter out the results we want and then plot them to see uh, with the impact of different parameters. Okay. So uh, call this one results underscore explore. Right? That's going to equal results underscore df. Right? Uh, and then we've got to cut down uh, what we're looking at. Right, so these are our different parameters that we use: vision one or two, uh, metabolism three or five, um, and so we'll do uh, metabolism uh, max, uh, and we will now just look at uh, instead of the five, uh, we'll look at the three. Right, so if this column equals equals three, they're essentially creating a new data frame called results explorer, where we only have metabolism the runs where metabolism max equals uh, three three. So right? here's that result. You can see we went from 4,000 rows to 2,000 rows. We essentially cut our results in half. Okay. Uh, and it's easy to change this to whatever parameter you want. Right? Uh, right. So if we change it to 5, that's fine. Uh, and then you could do different columns. Like uh, since we did vision, you could change your vision then from 1 to 2 uh, and, and explore those results. All right. So let's see what kind of impact it had. All right, we could just do the same, um, be a little bit lazy here. We could just do this, the same function. We'll do plt.scatter, but instead of results df, we'll do results underscore explore. And results underscore explore here, right? And see what happens. Okay, so that unsurprisingly, we get the exact result we expected because it's so resilient. Uh, so now I'll, let's look at something that actually does change, uh, which would be the amount of. Uh, agents that survive, right? So uh, same kind of dynamic, plt.plot results ex underscore explore, right? Uh, the x is going to be always going to, or consistently the step function will be our x, then results uh, underscore explore, right? And this time we're going to say the y is going to be the number of traders, okay? Uh, so from our, um, our kind of cut down, we get this result, and that straight line, uh, at a negative one slope, it looks like, is seems very unusual, right? So what's happening here? Well, you just got to be careful because of how uh, the data is being interpreted, right? Where uh, we have all the steps, uh, you know, zero through a thousand and all the traders, right? And, and they can cross uh, iterations, right? It'll cross run IDs, right? And so that's why you get that line as it tries to figure out what exactly you want to plot, all right? So, um, Another way to do this, then, if you want to see, okay, what's the difference between each of these uh, various runs uh, and the impacts of the parameters that it, uh, that I had, and in this case for trader, um, for the number of traders that survived, uh, we can we could just iterate through uh, the run IDs, right? Uh, so before I, uh, and then this is uh, in the number of iterations that we had, which is four, right? So based off the different parameters, we ended up with four iterations. That's kind of automatically calculated uh, by Mesa when you do batch runner. So before I, uh, in range three, or at zero to three, uh, actually we have to up that to four, uh, but, and then we want to cut, uh, we essentially want to make a data frame for each of those variations. So just like we uh, up previously uh, cut it down to results explore, all right, we'll just uh, pass that I uh, as a parameter right, to, to pull out the specific um, uh, run iteration that we want, right? To be results underscore DF, and then results underscore DF, and then the column we're concerned about, uh, which is run ID, right? So run capital I, lowercase d, and that's going to equal uh, I, right? So we're just iterating through that, and then we'll make a plot uh, of each of each of those and see how it works. It's actually going to be four, all right? So zero to three, right? and the way uh, Python range works is this will take us to three. All right? We then are essentially making a little data frame uh, from each of the subsections, and we only get one plot because I did equals one and not equals i. So I got to change this to equals equals i. We run it. There we go. We get our four um, uh, parameters, right? Where based off of metabolism. Uh, and vision changes, you get vastly different, um, vastly different agent survivals, but they all they all have a signature, similar signature uh, in their curve, right? So this then is how you kind of set up batch run, where you create a dictionary of parameters, right? We did a very small one just for the sake of time, uh, and then you analyze it in a similar fashion, uh, just to be careful that sometimes uh, what you the results you might 
think you're going to get isn't the results you're going to get. All right. And so with that, we have now concluded session 20 batch one. And this is the last coding session. And the next session will wrap it up. And you'll have completed all of Complexity Explorer's Mesa tutorial. Thanks for all the time and energy you spent into this. And I hope it's been helpful for you.